this is the Zotac Pico PI225. This is an incredibly tiny little PC. Just to give you a, a bit of context, comparing this to a two and a half inch SSD, yes, they might be a tiny bit thicker if basically the same size, but it's actually a smaller overall footprint, as you can see by the fact that this HyperX SSD is physically hiding this full PC. Now this PC has 32 gigs of eMMC flash, it also has four gigabytes of RAM and it uses an Intel, I think it's N3350 dual core. It's a 1.1 gigahertz CPU. Uh, it's completely passively cooled as the overall just sort of heatsink is the case or chassis itself, as you can see by the nice aluminum fins here. And otherwise, in terms of connectivity, you have two USB type C ports, one of which you're gonna be using with the included dongle um, because of course dongle life baby um, but this one the dongle has two usb 3.0 ports and one hdmi ports and also on the back you do have a micro usb ports for power this is a 5 volt 3 amp uh, power input so you can't just plug this into a pc you do have to use a wall wart uh, on the other side you do have a power button and a power led and the opposite side to that is a micro sd card slot so with that out of the way what is the use for this kind of thing well the idea is that this is good for digital signage also office work and stuff at that, even the home media center kind of use. Now, I originally thought, and when I did my original Pico video with the PI, I think it's 335, which is the, the bigger model, um, that one was uh, a pretty cool little device. I had a gigabit ethernet, or actually I think I had 100 meg ethernet on it, but either way, had ethernet available, had a couple more USB ports available, and was a little bit more powerful than this one, so you're able to, you're able to do stuff like Steam in-home streaming pretty nicely, also stuff like Plex streaming, so that was a really great feature. With this one, I did try out all of those things, and for me, this one is just a little bit on the slow side, I think, in terms of uh, trying to stream 1080p content that just, even on YouTube or on uh, Plex directly, that just didn't really work out all that well. I think Plex was a little bit of a better experience once you let it get started uh, and you just kind of left it, but there was a lot of buffering, a lot of stuttering, and generally just not a very nice uh, overall playing experience. And when I was trying to do general web browsing use with it, it was a lot more... Uh, stuttery, very slow, even though I have, it's right next to the, the Wi-Fi connection, um, because there is no dedicated Ethernet port or anything, you can't speed the internet connection up, you just have to deal with the built-in Wi-Fi, um, which was a little bit on the slow side, and because it's a dual core and it's running only 4 gigs of RAM, and it's running a full copy of Windows 10 Home, it does make it a little bit on the slow side. Now I should mention that this does come with a bracket and a screw that allows you to connect this to a single VESA mount port, or you know, a single VESA mount screw. So if you do want to attach this to the back of a monitor and completely forget about it, you can do. The one thing that I would mention though is that because this comes with a full copy of Windows 10 Home on it, that does mean that it does run rather slow. Although I can imagine this in a more office environment with a thin client uh, solution or a thin client version of Windows where effectively the, the actual local PC, this thing barely does any computation and it's just used to have that thin client version of Windows installed on it and then effectively just stream a copy of the OS from a server and send commands back. In that sort of scenario, I think this could be really interesting and could definitely sort of declutter desks quite a lot. So perhaps uh, it might be worth some offices taking a look at these. So with that said, what is the kind of uh, personal use case for this? Well, I'm not entirely sure that this specific model really has that much of a personal use case, especially considering that it was a little bit on the slow side for general web browsing use, for general um, like media center kind of use. And I don't think that it could handle stuff like Steam and home streaming. I don't think that this is necessarily for the personal Personal market. I think it is more for the sort of thin client business market, um, or perhaps if you do stick Linux on it, it might be a little bit faster. But overall, I think that's my my uh, my take on it anyway. When it comes to scoring for me, this is going to be a three for value for money, but I think a two point five for performance. When it comes to uh, functionality, I think this is going to be a three. Its size does definitely help it here, and the overall connectivity is decent, but the overall functionality just isn't that great. And I also don't really know why they're using micro USB for power input on the back where they could have used the more durable type C connector. So I'm not really sure on that one. And in terms of styling, I actually really like this. It's going to be a 4.5, but in terms of TechTeamDB score, I think it will be a rounded 3.5. 
it is a decent device and especially if you were to put a thin client on it or even run Linux on it, it would do a really decent job but a full copy of Windows is just a bit too slow. With that said, if you have any questions about it, leave those in the comments down below and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can and if you want to know any more about the price or just anything else, take a look at the links in the description down below for the system. If you want to support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, please do use the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below whenever you're buying from either of those places. There is also some other videos over here for you and if you're new to the channel do uh, click that subscribe button uh, for more videos as I said on Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. I'm also doing live streams on Thursday nights at UK time so feel free to tune in for those. Otherwise that's pretty much it so I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.